The Irish Center sits at the bottom of a slope, and it's a pretty steep one. As you've probably heard, a developer from Canada wants to put an eight-story building there. And that's going to mean a lot of excavating. Unfortunately, that same slope is listed on city government maps as being at the very highest risk for landslides. It's not just because it's steep, although that is a factor. It's because of the kind of rock. For those of us who live in Pittsburgh, it's not exactly news that Commercial Street gets a lot of landslides. We've seen that road get blocked again and again. So we're at the bottom of the slope, and it gets a lot of landslides. And judging from the developer's plans, here's how things are probably going to look. So here's the plans. This here is the present day contour. Down here is how the developer wants to dig it out. So at this spot, they're planning to remove three stories of earth. For those of us who live in southwestern Pennsylvania, it's just our bad luck that we live in one of the highest risk areas for landslides anywhere in the United States. Within our area, some kinds of rock are worse than others. And unfortunately, the very worst layer of rock is that one that's exposed just above the Irish Center. A geologist will tell you. We can look at this kind of geology diagram. But one of the nice things about Frick Park is that some of this geology is out in plain view. And you can go down and see it for yourself anytime you want. Next time you're in Frick Park, take a walk up the Fells Ravine Trail. And when you get to mile marker 0.4, have a look in the creek bed and you'll see this layer of gray stone here. This layer is known to geologists as the Ames Limestone. If you look closely at the Ames Limestone, you can sometimes see fossils. This example is right beside the trail. These are crinoid fossils. These were little creatures that lived underwater, and they're closely related to starfish and sea urchins. When a geologist sees the Ames limestone, they know where we are in the geological column. This layer is found in a wide region, even out into West Virginia and Ohio. Now, just down the hill from the Ames limestone is this red shale. And this same thick layer of rock is found on that slope just above the Irish Center. You can imagine drawing a dotted line through the hill, and it's the same units of rock over there. Now, this red shale is known as the Pittsburgh Red Beds, and it's the reason why that slope above the Irish Center is so prone to landslides. Now, let's jump over to just west of Pittsburgh. This is Kilbuck Township. The photo is from 1973, and we're looking at the old state psychiatric hospital, which closed in 1984. Eventually, the property was bought by Walmart, and they wanted to put a store there. So, in 2006, Walmart had a contractor working on leveling out the terrain. On September 19th, this happened. The landslide blocked a major highway. It blocked all three tracks of a primary rail connection between Chicago and New York City. The disaster resulted in all kinds of economic loss. Afterwards, Walmart gave up on the store, but they still had the responsibility to get the hillside stabilized. And that effort took over seven years, and it ended up costing Walmart around $50 million. There were lawsuits that went on for years. The Pennsylvania State Legislature commissioned an investigation, and there's a lot of information here. There's one whole section about how to avoid this kind of economic loss, and there's something here that I want to quote. 
One of the most economical and effective practices to reduce landslide losses is avoidance. Land use planning aimed at locating developments on stable ground and relegating landslide-prone slopes to open space, parks, or other low-density uses. Although total avoidance of landslide risks is unrealistic, local communities often adopt policies that attempt to limit the types and or densities of development in landslide-prone areas as a means of minimizing the exposure to risk. So let's go back to Frick Park. And here's those areas again with the highest risk of landslides. Now let's switch over to the city's zoning map. Notice that the Irish Center is zoned as parkland. I think the city officials knew what they were doing. There are good reasons why high density development doesn't belong here. It's not just about aesthetics. In this case, the zoning also has to do with managing some very real geological hazards. The developer has applied for a zoning variance, and maybe they'll get it, but you can't get a variance from Mother Nature. Now let's go back to those rocks. Now I want to read to you what the Pennsylvania Geological Survey had to say about this rock from a publication back in 1975. The rocks of the Conemaw Group are the most landslide prone of the greater Pittsburgh region. Unstable slope conditions are especially common in the middle part of the group from approximately 100 feet above the Ames limestone to the top of the Buffalo sandstone. Now, the Buffalo sandstone is a layer that's underground uh, here. It's maybe 200 feet underground from where I'm standing. Landslides are associated with red clay shale units, known locally as Pittsburgh red beds. These red beds are found mainly below the Ames limestone member of the Glenshaw Formation. Here's a geological map of the greater Pittsburgh region. Here's the two areas we've been talking about. Just a word on the symbols. These diagonal lines indicate the Glenshaw Formation. It's older. These vertical lines indicate the Castleman Formation. It's a little bit younger. Together, these two make up the Connemaw Group. Here's the geological symbols. That funny letter P means Pennsylvanian, because that's the larger geological period that we're in. This red line indicates the Ames limestone, and it defines the boundary between the Glenshaw and the Castleman. So here's the two locations. Geologically speaking, they are basically identical. In both cases, the building site is a little bit downhill from the level of the Ames limestone. In both cases, it's in the Glenshaw, right in the middle of the Pittsburgh Red Beds. And in both cases, the plan was to create a flat area to build on. Now, under different geological conditions, this can work just fine. But in the Pittsburgh Red Beds, this is not a good idea. So why are these Pittsburgh Red Beds such a problem when it comes to landslides? Well, the problem is, when this kind of rock gets soaked in water, it gets slippery. So all of the soil and rock that's sitting on top is essentially sitting on a greased surface, and all of it can come just sliding right off. The Irish Center is zoned as parkland, and that means that multi-unit housing is not allowed. Now, the developer has applied for a variance, and it's on them to show that the variance is justified. Sometimes, one of the reasons why an area is zoned as parkland is because there's a natural geological hazard. This is a concern here. I think the public has the right to know, because this affects other people. Do we need to be concerned about the integrity of Walnut Towers? 
Is it possible that this major transportation corridor could be compromised? Could a landslide cause a rupture in this natural gas line? So here's what we want the developer to tell us. Have you engaged the services of a licensed geologist? Do you have a site report? If the answer is yes, then give us a chance to evaluate it in advance of the zoning hearing. If the answer is no, then I don't think that you've shown that the variance is justified. And I certainly hope that the zoning board does the right thing. Thank you.